This is the story of Cindy Lou Ella, a country fairy tale, by Rachel Andreas and Casey Scarborough. Once upon a time, on a small farm down in Texas, there lived a little country girl as sweet as molasses. Her name was Cindy Lou Ella, with her long hair like pure spun gold. She was her daddy Earl's pride and joy, even now, at 18 years old. Her mama Darlene had gone on to be with the Lord when Cindy Lou Ella was just a little girl. Then her daddy soon remarried to a mean old woman named Katie Pearl. Now, Katie Pearl had two daughters that were as mean as an old bull on a scorching hot day in July. Their names were Sissy Lynn and Reba Sue, and their specialty was making poor Cindy Lou Ella cry. Cindy Lou Ella always had the feeling that her stepmother and stepsisters wanted her out of the way. They always made her do all of the daily chores so that she would not have the time to play. Milk the cows, slop the hogs, and gather up all the eggs. Scrub the floors, wash the clothes, and don't even whine about your aching legs. All of these orders and demands, Katie Pearl would boldly shout. She would keep piling chores on Cindy Luella until she would wear that girl plumb out. Daddy Earl never even knew any of this meanness toward Cindy Lou Ella was going on. He had taken to his bed real sick and was as weak as a tiny fawn. Cindy Lou Ella didn't want to worry her precious daddy, so she never uttered a word. When she would bring him his supper in the evening, she would tell him to rest assured that she was so very happy and that Katie Pearl and the girls were so kind. She knew if her daddy knew the truth, he would just about lose his mind. She would lovingly sit by his bed and read to him from his favorite book, and Earl would just stare at his daughter and the care that she took. To be with him through all of his pain and not have a life of her own, he wanted her to get married and have her own little home. As Cindy Lou Ella would tend to the fields on her daddy's old tractor, she would dream of having her own home, too, about living happily ever after. On the other side of town, where life was for the rich and frilly, there lived a handsome young man, and his name was Joe Billy. He was the sole heir to a fortune and never knew what it was like to be poor. He was guaranteed to inherit his daddy's flourishing tractor park store. His daddy, Joe Billy Sr., told him that it was time for him to find a purty little wife. He was going to throw a special shindig as early as tomorrow night. Who's going to help you run the store when your mama and I aren't here? You could have any gal in town that you wanted. They will come from far and near. Just to have one dance with my handsome son, Joe Billy, and maybe catch his eye forever. She needs to be sweet, she needs to be classy, and it wouldn't hurt if she was clever. Joe Billy replied, I know every gal in town and not a one of them I would want to marry. The thought of being hitched to one of is downright scary. But I'll let you give this dance and we'll, we will sure as fire see if it's my money they want or just to be with me. The announcement went out on the next day on the AM radio that this very night there would be a dance next to the old drive-in show. It said for all of the ladies to come to the t old town hall, it started at nine, and to be on time, and don't forget your dancing boots, y'all. Sissy and Reba Sue were painting each other's nails when they heard the announcement, and Reba Sue started to wail. Oh my gosh, what in the world am I going to wear to this special little dance? My black starch jeans or my hot pink leather pants. They both started rummaging through their closets and their drawers when all of a the sudden they heard a soft knock on their door. What's going on in here? Cindy Luella innocently wanted to know. Sissy Lynn yanked open the door and yelled, don't you have some flowers to grow? Sissy 
You know Mama told you to get to work in the yard. And that is when Cindy Luella started to bawl real hard. She tore off running to the meadow behind the old red barn. She threw herself down into blue bonnets and buried her head in her arms. When she finally had no more tears because they had all run bone dry, she sat up and looked around and boy was she surprised. Because there in front of her had to be the oldest thing she had ever seen. There was a possum in a pink cowboy hat and she announced, I'm your fairy godmother, Pearlene. Standing right beside her was an armadillo in a dress. I'm your other fairy godmother, Adele, and we will get you out of this mess. Cindy Lou Ella replied, Why, what mess are you talking about? I, I don't quite understand. Pearlene boasted, Why, that hoedown going on tonight. We're going to help you find a man. Quiet down, Pearlene, Adele said gently. You honestly sound like an old hillbilly. There's a dance tonight, my precious one. We are going to dress you up. You need to have some fun. Those sisters of yours have been mean to you for the very last time. Now, sit up, child, Pearlene piped in. Your fashion is all mine. Not so fast, Pearlene. Your fashion is a little much. Let me give her a gentle touch. With the flip of Adele's wand made of lace, Cindy Lou Ella became dressed with impeccable taste. Her dress was light pink with pretty little pink cowboy boots to match. And Pearlene hollered, Ooh-wee! Now all you need is a sparkly cowboy hat. With the flip of her wand made of purple leather, she whistled and said, Now that's much better. Cindy Lou Ella twirled all around. She felt like she was being lifted up off the ground. To dance would make her feel great. And then she stopped suddenly and said, Oh, wait, my stepsisters probably took the truck to the dance and they would never give me the chance to ride with them into town. And then Cindy Lou Ella could not help but frown. Adele said, Girl, there is nothing to fear when Pearlene and I are here. Our diesel truck is behind the barn. We'll drive you there, but please be forewarned. Pearlene drives a little fast. And with that said, they were gone in a flash. Pearlene took the curves on the gravel road like she was a race car driver on the truck. Pearlene said, Don't be scared, sugar. We'll get you there safely, and that's a fact. The truck rolled up to the dance in a cloud of smoke and dust. Pearlene said, Take this card. And in the message, you must trust. Cindy Luella looked down. The business card plainly said, Don't for a second take that cowboy hat off your head, for if you do, the magic of the night will be totally broken. The Rags to Riches Fairy Godmother Company has spoken. When Cindy Lou Ella looked up, the two creatures of the night were gone, and in that moment, she heard her favorite song. She entered the front door and a hush fell over the crowd. Joe Billy wondered what was happening and then he turned around. He found himself staring and didn't want to make a scene, but he knew in that instant that he'd found his country queen. He made his way through the crowd to her and asked, may I please have the honor of this dance? Cindy Lou Ella did not hesitate. She knew this was her big chance. They two-stepped through the night and spun across the floor. The other people in the room did not seem to matter anymore. It was like they were the only ones left in the room. And Joe Billy said, I hope tonight it is not it. I must see you again soon. Cindy Lou Ella replied, I honestly feel just the same, but you haven't even told me your name. Well, my name is Joe Billy and my daddy gave this dance just for me. He wanted me to find a wife here. And I just couldn't see how I'd ever find someone to be with forever that would be so pure and true. But I know that I have found her now that I am with you. Suddenly, the dance hall door flung open and a strong summer wind rushed in. Cindy Lou's Ella's hat flew off and she remembered Perlene's words again. Before Joe Billy even realized what was going on, Cindy Lou Ella ran out of the dance hall and just like a ghost, she was gone. The sound of a diesel truck was clanking over on the street. As Cindy Lou Ella ran to it, she noticed her bare feet. The cowboy hat was gone, her jeans were on, and so was her old worn t-shirt. She looked tattered, 
Her dreams were shattered, and above all, her feelings were hurt. Adele said, Get on up in this truck, dear girl, and hold on real tight. The rags to riches magical spell has been broken for tonight. Perline punched the gas, and they were off down the old gravel road. Perline turned to Adele and shouted, We're getting way too old. Suddenly, Cindy Lou Ella started to cry, and Adele looked her square in the eye and said, Don't cry, Cindy Lou Ella. We just know things will work out for you. Life always works out for the good people in the end. Just remember, we're not only your fairy godmothers, but your true friends. They wheeled up to the back of the barn, and Cindy Lou Ella slowly got out of the truck. Perline and Adele both hugged her and whispered, Good luck. With that said, they both jumped back into the truck and peeled out of sight. Cindy Lou Ellis sauntered back to the house and thought, Golly, what a night. She tiptoed through the house and then snuggled up in bed. She dreamed of Joe Billy and all that he had said. On the other side of town, up and not able to go to bed, was the handsome Joe Billy with visions of Cindy Lou Ella in his head. I don't even know where she lives or the sound of her name. I have got to find her tomorrow or I will go insane. The only thing he had of hers was the pink cowboy hat. He held it close to his heart and thought, well, that settles that. From house to house he went and placed the cowboy hat on many a girl, but it did not fit. He drove up to one last farm and thought to himself, well, this is it. He walked up to the porch and knocked on the old screen door. He was beginning to think this whole mission didn't matter anymore. Katie Pearl opened the door and asked, Well, what can I do for you? Joe Billy said, I must have every girl in your house try on this hat to find my love so true. Katie Pearl yelled, Sissy Lynn, Reba Sue, come here and don't take your time. When Reba Sue saw the hat, she yelled, oh, That's mine! That's mine! She quickly grabbed the hat and placed it on her head, but it wouldn't go down far enough, and her face turned hot and red. Sissy Lynn grabbed it and put it on, but it fell down below her eyes. At that moment, Cindy Lou Ella walked in, and boy, was she surprised. Katie Pearl saw the look exchanged between the boy and Cindy Lou. Joe Billy gently placed the hat on her head and said, Yeehaw! It's you! Katie Pearl snatched the hat off Cindy Lou Ella and said, Well, I don't know what to say, but your daddy Earl has never met this boy and would never give you away. At that moment, they heard a voice clear and turned around to see. Daddy Earl was in the doorway and he said, Well, I'll be. My Cindy Lou Ella has found someone that brings a smile to her face. I, without a doubt, give y'all my approval and grace. Right that second, Joe Billy picked up Cindy Lou Ella and swung her around, and a few months later, Cindy Lou Ella was standing at the altar in a gorgeous wedding gown. Everyone was there, Katie Pearl, the sisters, and Daddy Earl standing proud. Even Cindy Lou Ella was leaving the church. She looked out into the crowd. Everyone was so happy for them as they rushed out into the sun. They were ready to go back to the dance hall, kick up their heels, eat some barbecue, and have some fun. The truck waiting to take them to the hall had a familiar clanking sound that Cindy Lou Ella knew. The tinted windows slowly rolled down and Perline and Shade said, yoo Cindy Lou Ella and Joe Billy jumped into the back seat and Cindy Lou Ella said, Honey, hold on tight. Adele yelled out, Punch it, Perline! as they raced out of sight. Well, that's the story of two country kids who fell in love. That's it, and that is all. And I'm betting they lived happily ever after. Now, don't y'all? The end.